Isaiah chapter 2, verse 10. All this passage, except for the last verse, is Second Advent. Enter to the rocks and hide thee in the dust, for the fear of the Lord, for the glory of his majesty. Now, Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. This is at the end of the tribulation. Revelation chapter 6, verse 16. When you go through, this is the sixth seal. Verse 16. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him, God, Jesus, that sitteth on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. Capital L. For the great day of his wrath is come, second advent. And who shall be able to stand? So Isaiah chapter 2, verse 10 is taking us at the end of the tribulation period. Here comes Jesus Christ. And it says in Revelation chapter 6, the throne. So it undoubtedly looks like when we see G when Jesus Christ, when they see Jesus Christ coming, they're going to see the white horse. They're going to see the church that's behind them. And evidently, they're going to see the heavens open. And you got to remember, at the end of the tribulation period, at the end of the seven years, all the trials, I mean, all the vials, all the seals, and the trumpets, all end at the last time of the, of the period of tribulation in darkness. The sun is turned off. The moon doesn't shine. The stars are darkened. The entire earth is in darkness. And then here comes a light from north. And that light gets closer and closer and closer. And it's got eyes of flames of fire. It's got a sword. It has an army behind him. What's the Jehovah Witness going to do? Oh, you know, we can't join the military because the Bible says thou shalt not kill. And here comes a mighty army, Joel chapter 2. And Jesus Christ is going to stomp on his enemies. The blood is going to be on his garments. And the people of the earth at that time, oh, no, hide us. Run to the rocks. Run to the cave. Get out of this. You know, it was locked that ran to a cave, evidently. It's where he was told to go in the first place at the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, he said, well, let me go to this little city. That's not what the angels told him. They said, get to the mountains. And the Bible says, remember Lot's wife. Enter into the rock, verse 10, and hide thee in the dust. That's what man is, dust. For the fear of the Lord, here he come. For the glory of his majesty. It's too late to fear the Lord in the second coming. Now, before the rapture of the church, now is the fear of the Lord. You're not going to fear the Lord in the tribulation period. You're going to fear, you're going to fear the Antichrist. And many are going to fear enough to take the mark. The lofty looks of man, the pride of man, shall be humbled. God's going to break your pride. And breaking the pride is just the fact is, there is Jesus. And when you read Revelation 19, it says it has a name that no man knows. Well, listen, it ain't the Apollo astronaut. It's not the dragon uh, astronaut. It's not the, uh, uh, what's the, that world thing that's floating around the earth coming down. It ain't NASA. It is God himself coming. Hide. The lofty looks of man shall be. So in the tribulation period, there is great pride. There is no pride with God. You know what God says when he's pleased? Man says, I'm proud. I'm proud of my son. I'm proud of my. God says, well done. This is my beloved son who I am well pleased. God never says, I had preached one. Oh, you know, there's a good pride. There is no good pride. And during the tribulation period, there's great pride. Lofty looks, the men shall be humbled. And the haughtiness, that's the first time that word shows up, of men shall be bowed down. 
And the Lord alone, the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. Not Whitefield. Not Sam Jones. Not Whitcliffe. Not Glutenberg. Not Stiley Hayward. Not Peter S. Ruckman. Not Roloff. Not Bob Jones Sr. Now we're going to be there. But the one that be exalted is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. I think some Baptists think when we're going to get to heaven, we're going to honor and give glory to them. And how many people came to Sunday school? How many people joined our church? How many people came forward? <laughs> it's all praise and glory to the Lamb of God. You know, some of your people that came to the to your altar, you think got saved, they may not have ever gotten saved. And it'll be to your damnation. It'll be to your condemnation. For the day of the Lord of hosts. And one of the prophets, I think Amos says, woe unto you to desire the day of the Lord. My grandma used to say, I can't wait for the day of the Lord. It's like, grandma, no, no. we're waiting for the rapture. The rapture is not the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, Amos says, I think it's Amos, it's a day of darkness. There's no sun. There's no moon. There's no stars. It's at the seven-year period of tribulation. There'll be no electricity. The day of the Lord is when Jesus Christ is on that horse, and he's coming back to the line of the tribe of Judah. He's coming like Joshua came. Come and get the nation of Israel and bring them into the promised land. It's going to be with Rahab. We're going to pick up Israel like Rahab in the wilderness and we'll see that in a moment the story of rahab's coming back but it, it won't be a gentile we get it'll be the church getting the children of israel the remnant the lord of hosts angels men church israel shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty and upon everyone that's lifted up you know who's going to take the mark? The proud, the lofty. The ones that are proud to serve the devil, to say it rules. Not when Jesus Christ comes. You think there's pride today. You wait by the end of the seventh year tribulation. Satan, the king, is the king over the children of pride? Well, he's got a whole world. They're just like him, prideful. Listen, they're gonna take some are gonna take that mark. All right, yeah, I'm gonna serve the, the beast. It's nothing but the beast for me. And they shall be brought low. God's gonna break them. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up. And upon all the oaks of Bashan. Now what God's saying is, you know, as mighty these trees are. This is what the man thinks he is. And men is like in the trees in the Bible. One man's blind. He says, what do you see? I see trees. As, I see men as trees walking. As those mighty oaks and those mighty cedars. How strong they are. And, they, and the weather and the storms and the wind. And they're still standing. When Jesus Christ comes, those mighty, powerful, lofty ones are going to be on their knees. They're going to be running. They're going to be hiding. From Jesus Christ. I'm going to be behind Jesus Christ all the way. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Upon all the high mountains where they worship gods. You know, back in Genesis, they tried to build a tower to get to heaven. Not God. Read it. They tried to get to heaven. Not God. Men in high places, the Bible speaks about in the Old Testament. We're trying to get as high as we can to, to reach the heavens. And today, with technology, we build the, the Mars rover. We build the, the, the satellites. We build the rocket ships. We got Hubble. We're in outer space. That's not where you belong. And do you realize that our United States program right now has... Instruments going to outer space called the dragon. You do know the dragon in Revelation chapter 12. You do know that they have one of the things called X. 
And if you know Dr. P. S. Ruckman and one of his great messages, watch out for words that end in X. I wouldn't be too too happy about our space program. Our space program's going the way of the Antichrist. I wouldn't be surprised one day they open that ship when it comes to Earth and a couple beans comes flying out. You believe all that? I just said, didn't I? I wouldn't say if I didn't believe it. And if, if there was any doubt or speculation, I would say, this is what I believe, and you can take it in the garbage can. With a dragon space program and the words ending in X, and I forget the, those two instruments that went on Mars, Harmony or something like that. And there was a, the very first spacecraft that went into outer space. They had a naked man and naked woman that's supposed to represent Adam and Eve. Where the angels fell in love with the men, with, with, the, with the daughters of men. And I know some pastors and preachers don't believe in that. I do. I do. So they're getting high. And upon all the hills, that's the highest we can get. That's the highest we'll go. They're lifted up. Upon every high tower, steeples. Steeples. Let's build a steeple on top of our church so we can get to the heavens. What should steeples do for God? What does your steeple on your church building do to reach God? Is it an antenna system? It has no purpose. And as a matter of fact, those steeples are, are symbols of penises, erected penises, and obelisks. And you can find it in Washington, D.C., and you can find it in the Vatican. And if you don't believe that, too bad you don't, because they built the tower in Genesis to get to the heavens, not to God. Now, the old churches had steeples. Yes, they did. And it had bells. You know what that was? It's 7 o'clock. Time for church because people didn't have alarm clocks. And many places didn't have town criers. Where they would, listen, in England, they would pay people that, that they would rap on your window. Hey, it's time for you to get up to go to work. Some cases, those church bells were to wake up the people. Study your church history, will you? Get your head out of the sand with, with the ostrich. And know your church history. Those bells were there to wake up the people. It's time to come to church. Those bells were, hey, the enemy's attacking. Everybody come, fight. Hey, there's a building on fire in the, in the, in the city or the town. Come and help us fight the fire. It acknowledges us as a church. Your steeple tells people you're a church. You mean you don't go in all the world and preach the gospel? You let you let you let an erected penis. Come on, that's what it is. It's an erected penis. I don't believe that. Okay, well, upon every fenced wall, upon all the ships of Tarshish. Now, in the, in the book of Revelation, tells us one third of the ships are going to be destroyed. One third of the trees are going to be destroyed. There is shipping going on in the tribulation period. Listen, you want to talk about Walmart? Have you read in the tribulation the merchandise of the of the city of Babylon and the merchandise of the Antichrist? Gold, silver, sil cinnamon, metals. And they even said there's one place, there's slaves. And then I think the very last one says the soul of man. There's an ultimate Walmart coming. And it ain't going to have a happy face. But it will have a sun. It will have the sun. You know, Walmart symbol is the sun. Bail. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Slide your hand under. People got to wake up. And upon all pleasant pictures. Those pictures are, are, are just idolatry, imagery. And you find that throughout the whole in, uh, Old Testament. Jeremiah speaks about it. Ezekiel speaks about it. 
and the loftiness, again, the pride of man shall be bowed down. And the halting man, hey, this is a repeat. This is a verily, verily. We saw this in verse 11. God said, hey, Isaiah, yes? You're going to write about the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. A virgin shall conceive and bear a child. Okay? But I want you to write this verse 11, and I want you to write down verse 11, verse 17. This is more important than the birth. Uh, the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, it, 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 you need to believe that to be saved. But nowhere does Paul tell the church to honor the birth of Jesus. He tells us to honor the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus according to the scriptures. A preacher said, oh, you know, he honors the death and, and burial of Jesus more than he does the birth. Ha, 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 yes, I do. Why don't you? We, we honor the, the, the Lord's Supper. What was the Lord's Supper? It's the night that Jesus Christ was going to die. Nowhere tells us to celebrate the birthday of Jesus. And this is a very, very, it's important. The loftiness of man shall be bowed down. The haughtiness of man shall be made low. And the Lord alone shall be exalted, verse 11, in that day. Men are going to evidently, eventually, they're going to fear Jesus Christ. They did it too late. Some people say, oh, I'll do it later. I'll get saved later. And eventually comes to the point they die and it's too late. This is going to happen in tribulation period. It's going to be too late. And the idols shall be utterly abolished, void, destroyed. That's the only place where that word abolished shows up in the Bible. Mary and the half shall be thrown to the bats. Those crosses that they make will be thrown away. The crucifix will be thrown away. The rosary beads will be thrown away. The big fat belly button Buddha will be thrown away. Because there's Jesus. Those China dolls where you put one side and another, put one side and another, another, be thrown away. Your aids of worship will be thrown away. Too late. And they shall go to the holes of the rocks. Again, we've read this. And this is Revelation 6. I'm trying to find, I got a note here. I'm just trying to find where it is. Uh, number two. Revelation 16, 18, and 11, 13. Let's go there. Revelation 16, 18. Let's see what the scripture says. Revelation 16. You know, scripture was scripture. Scripture was scripture. And my pages are stuck together. Revelation 16, and I said 18. Let me try to write one. 16. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. There was great earthquake. And there was not since men were upon the earth, mighty earthquake. And it's so great, the great city was divided in three. But we're going to read about this great earthquake. We're going to read about this earthquake. They shall go into holes of rocks and into the caves of the earth. The fear of the Lord. They're going to fear God one day. It's too late. It's too late to wake up in hell and say, okay, God, you're right. It's too late. For the glory of his majesty, when he arises, second advent, to shake terribly, there's the earthquake, to shake terribly the earth. They shake terribly the earth. I'm trying to find that for note number two. And we read it. Well, again, Revelation 6.13. That's what I wanted. Revelation 6.13. We read about the earthquake. Revelation 6.13. Scripture with scripture, my friend. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Revelation 6.13. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as a fig 
casts her untimely figs, and she is shaking a mighty wind. Lights go out. And the heaven departed as a scroll, and it was it was rolled up together in every mountain, high mountain, everywhere man worshiped the heaven. I was moved out of the place. The kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men, and every bond man, every free man hid themselves in the dens of the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, from the wrath of the Lamb. The great day of his wrath cometh. I'm glad I'm standing on behind Jesus Christ. I'm glad I'm not standing in front of Jesus. Because you're not going to stand in front of Jesus. You're going to hit the ground on your knees and then you're gone. Joel chapter 2, we're going to be on white asses behind Jesus Christ. Verse 20, in that day, a man will cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold. And again, the Rudolph, the, the Rudolph Christmas cartoon with, with Cornelius, silver and gold, silver and gold. The devil knows the scriptures. Why didn't Cornelius sing the gold and the silver? The gold and the silver. Because the devil had to go by the Bible. There'll be idols of silver and idols of gold in the tribulation period. Like there are idols of, of silver to Jupiter. Or, yeah, Jupiter. Diana, have you seen the 2020 Christmas star? It's not a star, it was two planets. And you know what one of those planets was? I think the one was Saturn. You know what the other planet was of the Christmas star to the 2020? It was Jupiter. You have read about Axe and Jupiter and the fallen image of Saturn. You did Saturn and Jupiter now, I think. But the fallen image that came down from the planet, not a star. It's so stupid. Oh, the star of Bethlehem. It's a planet. It's two planets. And the planet in the book of Acts is a reference to Diana. And you know what the silversmiths of Diana did to the preachers and street preachers and to the preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ? They put them in jail. They raise an outraise in, in the city. Great is the Diana. Great is the Diana. And today the media gets the Christian. Great is the star of Bethlehem. The great is the star of Bethlehem. You're ignorant. You haven't studied your Bible. It's sorry. It's sorry I try to teach Christians the word of God and they come firing back at me and, you know, you can't mock Christmas. And all. Okay, fine. I'm going, to keep, I'm going to continue to preach the truth and you reject the truth. That's your trouble. But don't you go there teaching other people it's the truth when it's not the truth. I had a pastor sit here in my house and rebuke me because the stuff I put about Christmas. And when I told him the history facts and, and, and Babylon and, and Syria and uh, uh, Rome and Egypt, that's what things that men wrote. Okay, fine. That's what they say about the Bible. That's what men wrote. Keep reading. Verse 20. Isaiah 2.20. In that day man shall cast his idols of silver, his idols of gold, which they made, made in China, made in America, made in Mexico, made in Hong Kong. A's of worship. Each one for himself to worship. You know what they're doing at the end of the tribulation? They all have their aid to worship. Now remember, by the end of the tribulation period, there is a great image like Nebuchadnezzar's image of the beast that died and came back to life. And it speaks. Maybe everybody has a little Buddha doll in the tribulation period of the beast. 
titles in silver and gold are going to be a dime a dozen. Get yourself a sack of potatoes and get yourself a copy of the image of the beast. Pictures. Pictures. You want to buy two sacks of potatoes? Get an actual idol. And to the moles, that's the only place moles shows up, underground. And to the bats, only place the Bible shows up, caves. Here, Mr. Mole, take my idol. Here, Mr. Bat. Na, 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 na. Batman! <laughs> no marvel for Satan himself. The Satan knows the Bible. I know people don't like this. Oh well. Go into the clefts of the rock. That's where Moses was hid. Moses, no one can see my face. But there is a cleft in the rock. I will put you, and I'll put my hand over when I, when I let my backsides. I am putting the cleft of rock of Jesus Christ. They're putting the clefts of rocks. <laughs> Their rock is not as our rock. My rock is going to be ahead of me coming back in Second Advent. Their rocks are not going to protect them from the rock. And the top of the ragged rocks, for the fear of the Lord. And the glory of his majesty again three times. When he arises to shake, there's that earthquake terribly to earth. Revelation 16, 14 to 17. At the end of the tribulation, there's an earthquake beyond all earthquakes. And then verse, 20, uh, verse 22. Cease ye from man. Stop yourself from man. Whose breath is his nostrils. That goes back to Genesis chapter 2. God breathed into man. He became a living soul. Wherein is he to be accounted for? I'm going to take verse 22. Talking about these prideful men. These idolaters. And, and these imagery men and all that. I'm still going to take verse 22 to say. Get away from them. Telling the Jew. Who this is written to verse 1. Judah and Jerusalem. Jesus says when it comes time to run, when you see the abomination, desolation, don't turn back, don't look back, get get out, get out. That's what Isaiah is saying. Get out. Don't even go back for your coat. Get away from them. Head to the mountains, head to the rock city. We believe it's still a preacher, but we, I mean, I'm not sure. But wherever God has prepared that place, Revelation chapter 12, get out, go. That's what Jesus said. That's what John said that Jesus said in the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 2. I don't like to read the Old Testament. What a shame. 